The city of Scottsdale is a special place because it has a great community of people. It is the golf, it's the tourism, it is the great weather, it is uh, the nightlife. It's really an intermixing and an intermingling um, that makes it very unique, very vibrant, but at the same time presents us with some uh, interesting challenges. Uh, we have 413 officers and about 262 civilian employees that police an area of 187 square miles. The effort here is a careful one because we are a resort and tourist community. We do not want to create an environment that looks too imposing. Uh, we want this environment to be fun and relaxed and at the same time safe. We manage and patrol such a live area uh, like the downtown entertainment district in the city of Scottsdale by partnering with the community and local businesses um, and having our officers involved in the decisions and the solutions that go along with making it a safe city. Scottsdale PD has always been on the cutting edge in terms of technology, in terms of process improvement, in terms of programs um, that really originate here and then wind up going throughout the country. The program that we instituted a number of years ago, which is Catching Fire Nationally, is our Know Your Limit campaign. And this is where we actually have officers on the street contacting the folks that are out there enjoying themselves while they're in uniform so they know we're the police. And we talk to them about knowing just perhaps how much they've had to drink and if they're prepared to drive home or if they need to find another way home. The reason this is so important is we can lock up between 10 and 15 DUIs with the staff that we have out there, but we can contact close to 500 on the average and prevent them from getting behind the wheel of a car. And that's really our objective. At first, when we first started the program, we found that most people were kind of skeptical about dealing with the police. They didn't really want to take a portable breath test. Um, they didn't want to talk to us because they thought that we were entrapping them. Um, and then once we started doing the program more often and on a regular basis, people began to recognize the program and its benefit. Um, and they started to have fun with it. And at the same time, we were educating them whether they knew it or not. Hey, now you're a 197. People kind of get curious as to, okay, why are these cops smiling and what are they giving to these other people here? Hey, I'm kind of interested. Then that is kind of how we bridge the gap and get them to understand this is something that, that you could benefit from. Because we're able to contact so many more people through the Know Your Limit program, I think we're able to reach more people. And when you can reach more people, obviously, you have more of an effect. They're out there making sure that people go home safely, which is all we care about. We don't care about arrest numbers, we don't care about that. All it is is send a message. It's because they'll do a great job, we know your limit. You can imagine that many people reveling in the street, uh, there are some challenges. We're currently working on a public safety ordinance which will be in partnership with our business owners, but also it's going to hold our business owners accountable for making sure that the, their, their businesses are as safe as, as possibly can be. The Public Safety Plan Ordinance really, uh, we believe, sets the standard for forging a relationship between police department staff and business staff in, in our entertainment district. And there are a number of components uh, of that relationship. Right now what happens is, is that security staff is not often trained or trained well or in any consistent manner. And so the police department along with the fire department will provide mandatory training to all bar security staff. It's a three-hour training course, 90 minutes of which is the police department, 90 minutes of which is the fire department. The second part of that is about verbal de-escalation and when we think they should be getting involved and when they shouldn't. But uh, I think we would all agree that no ordinance, no law is really going to uh, prevent acts of violence from occurring when you put 10 or 15,000 people together and then you add alcohol. So if you have what we're calling a public safety incident, uh, if you have two or more in a week or three or more in a month, then you'll be required to hire off-duty police officers for a period of three months uh, at your facility. If you have one public safety incident in which a deadly weapon or a dangerous instrument is used, you'll be required to hire off-duty police officers too for a period of three months uh, so that we create a higher degree and a higher level of safety and that we work more collaboratively with your security staff. The Public Safety Ordinance is a collaborative effort 
between the stakeholders in downtown. With everybody having a realization of how important it is to maintain a safe environment, we engaged all elements of the folks, the businesses, the property owners, and what was, uh, I think, uh, understood finally uh, is that this was as valuable to them and the continuance of their business as anything else. Anytime you can partner with the community, partner with business owners, um, get the police involved with the people that are invested in the community, I think that's just going to benefit the community and the patrons that, that participate downtown and, and enjoy our downtown. We're not doing our jobs if we can find 20 drunks in a night. We're doing our jobs if we can find zero drunks in a night. That means we're effective.